Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Movie and a Han. I'm RJ. And I'm Paige. And today we're going to be talking about Scream 2 from 1997. Literally, like, a year after the first Scream came out, which is amazing this came out that quick. Do you think they already planned a sequel when the first one came out? Oh, they did not. <laughs> so, that I can't believe they got it done so fast. I mean, if I think correctly, uh, Kevin Williamson wrote the first one in, like, a weekend. Oh, wow. Okay. While he was in the middle of the desert. Okay. I know he wrote it in the desert. So it's not impossible. And also, the script's pretty elementary yeah, when you is. look at it. Um, this is my favorite. This is your... Have you seen Scream 2 before? I've seen it before. I think I've seen it once or twice before. Um, it's fine. I don't really have that much of a negative or positive reaction to it. So, But before we get into the movie, let's talk about the trailer. That is so much better oh. than the first movie's trailer. Oh yeah, it was it was a lot better. Um, it still felt like, for me, this one felt like a trailer for straight to VHS. I don't know why. Maybe it was the editing. Um, but you're right. The trailer was a lot better. Uh, it tells the story. It gives you basically what you're what you're getting yourself into. Um, it doesn't give away the kills, which is great for a horror movie trailer. Um, yeah, it it was much better. Not great, but much better <laughs> the one thing i i guys noticed when we were watching it was they would be like oh and it could be anybody like killer wise and it cuts and they do like the, like the super like jump cuts and it's like really quick and they cut to like sydney seven times it looks like yeah 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 trying to push home she's the killer like <laughs> she could be the killer and it's like eh, she it snapped you... from the first one and she's getting her revenge <laughs> It's great when they do that, but then when she's getting, like, chased, like, 20 minutes into the movie, you're like, yeah, totally the killer. Oh, yeah, she's totally chasing herself? Okay. <laughs> but I think the problem with the screen movie so far is just these trailers have nothing to talk about. They, they Like, they don't really have much. Now, do you think that's because, again, the script is elementary, so there's not much of a trailer to make? That, but also... Um, there's another reason in the sense that when Scream 5 came out, you know, the one that came out uh, this year, the trailers kind of showed you the plot and you were able to guess who the killers were very easily because oh, of the trailer. Oh, that's such trash. No. But the thing is, the thing with Scream is if you actually do a trailer that's like really story heavy and gives you like the whole thing of the movie, you're going to be able to guess who the killer is. Yeah, again, because it's, it's pretty simplistic in that sense. Yeah. yeah. Now, I will say, this is probably the least simplistic movie. Oh, no, 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 no. The next one is, because that's long-lost sibling territory. Mm. Uh, but the killers made no sense in this movie. Yeah, no. Well, no. Not at all. Until they were like, oh, it's Billy Loomis's mother. You're like, uh, okay, that's a weird plot point to drive in, like, five <laughs> minutes before this movie ends. And then the other killer, like, disappeared 40 minutes into the movie. Yeah. So by the time he shows back up, you forget he's even in the movie anymore. Um, however, I just want to piece together some stuff. Um, at the end of the trailer, they're like, music by, which, uh, Collective Soul, who does the main theme song for this mm -hmm. uh, movie. And I also have a guitar signed by them. Don't ask. Like, a neighbor gave it to me. I, I don't know why. <laughs> uh, the Dave Matthews Band, why the fuck are they in this movie? It's 1997. Were they big in 1997? Yes. I'm sorry. I just always thought that Dave Matthews Band was kind of like a cockroach. Uh, no, like, no matter how much you try to get rid of them, you're not getting rid of them. Hey, they have some really diehard fans. I know. I have a family member that's a groupie for them. Ooh, okay. Yeah, trust me. I know who the Dave Matthews Band <laughs> is. I hate them. Uh, Foo Fighters. Hell yeah. Did you remember hearing the Foo Fighters song in this movie? No. Okay. Well, again, I wasn't keen on the music in this movie, but well, I'll go into that later. True, but like when we did House of Wax, you were <laughs> we were very much into oh, what the hell happened that music for was. For that, it seemed like for House of Wax specifically, whenever there was like establishing shots or just B-roll shots, that's when they decided to play their music, so it was like in your face. Um, and I think Everclear was also on mm -hmm. that. Everclear, yeah. That that they're a band that you could put that song midway through the movie, and I would have been like, I don't know who this is by, yeah. and then I checked the track list, it's like, oh, 
Everclear. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds came back with Red Right Hand, which mm-hmm. played a few times in the movie. And also, um, before we get into the actual movie, since there's not, a, not another place where we can talk about this, this movie had a lot of product placement by Pepsi. <laughs> Pepsi, I noticed. You noticed Ruffles. Ruffles, and then Baskin Robbins when um, Randy and Dewey were talking about yeah. it together. Like, yeah, they yeah. had a full-on shot of two cups from Baskin Robbins. Yeah. They gotta but get Pepsi was somehow. obnoxious. Yeah. They were like, when you say uh, one diet Pepsi, I was like, oh, God. <laughs> like, yeah, it is a t- Can you just say one Pepsi? I would have respect you more if you just said one <laughs> singular Pepsi. Uh, it was in the movie theater. In a, yeah, it was in the movie theater yeah. quite a bit. It was in the, the school. Room. Yeah, the lunchroom. Yep. Which is like the nightmare of this movie is that yeah. lunchroom. Um, but... You can just tell a lot of companies were like, oh, wow, teens really like that last one. Can we be in your movie? Yeah, we'll no, that's exactly what happens. And then the the uh, movie studio is like, oh, yeah, you want to fork over some money? No problem. <laughs> and here's the thing. Those three are the only ones I caught. Right. There was probably more, and we just didn't pay attention. These oh, ones probably. were just in your face. <laughs> well, the Ruffles one wasn't as in your, in your face, we just you went oh my god the Pepsi and then literally the next shot they cut to a lunch table and it's just a crinkled bag of Ruffles but the Ruffles logo is perfectly visible oh, towards yeah. the camera yeah. so it's you know they paid for that uh, but um yeah as you can tell the trailer had nothing to, the trailer had nothing because we are talking about product placement yep yep however I will say compared to last episode where we had nothing to talk about. I have a lot to talk about in this one. This one's, this one's a a travesty. All right. So (laughs) you want to get into it then? Yeah, let's do this. All right. All right. All right, Paige. So quick thing. I've got to talk about one thing in the trailer. Okay. I love how in the trailer, they introduce Gail Weathers as Gail Weathers, author of the Woodsboro Murders. <laughs> murders. They even do it in the trailer. I'm like, they they were pushing this home. Oh. She is the author of the Woodsboro Murders. We have to make sure we everyone knows this. She's not oh, just a reporter. <laughs> she is an author. <laughs> Last movie, she was Gail Weathers. This movie, she's Gail Weathers, author of the Woodsboro Murders by Gail Weathers. <laughs> <laughs> also, best costuming in this entire movie goes oh, to Gail oh, Weathers. always. However, Windsor College seniors Maureen Evans and Phil Stevens attend the sneak preview of Stab, a movie based on the events of the Woodsboro Massacre. Uh, We get a Sandra Bullock plate like name drop in here. Yeah, I mean she's big. We at this point was she big? Oh hell yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry, I didn't know. A, I was only like what, like two years old. but also, I don't, I didn't really hear of her name until, like, Miss Congeniality. Oh, okay. But, yeah. Which is, like, early 2000s? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, this whole thing is, you know, making fun of the white person trope in horror movies where it's white people do the stupid shit. I mean, they're not wrong at all. Oh, they're not. Yeah. Uh, and I remember you brought up, <laughs> you brought up, like, while we were watching it, you were just like, Wow, that's a really expensive thing to give people when they gave everyone a costume who came into the theater. Yeah, full-blown Halloween costume. Literally every single person that was lined up outside gets a scream mask and, you know, body thing. And it was a glow-in-the-dark. And I remember as a kid having the ghost face mask. That glow-in-the-dark mask sucked. It It did not glow in the dark. Ever, ever, ever. And it always, like, turned, like, this weird color because it never worked, so it just settled. And, oh, it was so nasty. Yeah. So gross. I think maybe today it could be somewhat decent, but back then, Glow in the Dark sucked. Yeah, it was bad. Um, and then they get into the theater, which can be only described as my nightmare in a movie theater. It's the absolute worst scenario if you're going to go watch a movie. Um, Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. When I saw Scream 4 in theaters, I saw it at the midnight showing when it first came out, and there were people full on about to have sex in like the in the like seats why it was a packed theater why i 
I, I lived in a college town, so I guess, but you know, college at students. a premiere. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I guess horror brings out the kinky shit. I, guess I, don't, so. I don't know. But even then, I was like, you know what? I'd rather watch a full blown sex scene, like five <laughs> seats, like five rows up from me, <laughs> than have to deal with all this shit of popcorn flying. They had a ghost face, like ghouly float, like on a wire across, like kind of like a uh, Vincent Price. Yeah, yeah. They had all of that. Yeah, it was bad. People chasing each and other. And then they had people run. Yeah. Yeah, it was annoying. <laughs> yeah. I hated it. Yeah. And I, I, was... I was with Maureen in this one. I was like, I want, I, Sandra Bullock looks great right now. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Uh, there, Phil is killed by the mass killer known as, now known as Ghostface. Oh, uh, that jumps. She, not really, because all it jumps is to, um, when she goes to get her Pepsi product placement. She goes to the concession, and then while she's coming back, he gives her a jump scare out of the closet or whatever. Um, and all you hear is his leather jacket, yeah. like, squeaking onto the mic. It's like, yeah. ugh, just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Also, you brought up something when we were watching this, hmm. uh, when they were showing the Casey scene, but, like, the Hollywood version of the Casey scene. Right, right. You're like, this isn't what happened, and I was just like, no, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> we know what happened. We watched the movie, but everyone else is like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess dramatization of real events. That's just goes to show you. Yeah. I mean, I like that they kept the popcorn, like the yeah. same exact type of popcorn yeah, yeah. set. But they're like, you know what she's gonna do? She's gonna be taking a shower, which <laughs> instead. was straight up a rip uh, from Psycho. Obviously, I yeah. mean this is a this is a movie that's commenting on horror movies, so they're gonna do as many references as possible. Yeah. Um, here's the thing. I just want to point something out. I could never do this. I always found this type of scenario creepy, and I never. I, I refuse to live in a place that has this. Her shower had a full blown fucking window in the shower, like a full body window. If it's a one way, that's fine. But yeah, no, I couldn't do it either. And plus houses that no. most, like 75% of their walls are just ceiling to floor windows creep me the hell out. No. Especially when they had the, um, the roof was glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good shot. It was. That was a good shot. It was I a great that. shot. I just would never want to fucking live in a place oh, like that. Oh, me neither. Me neither. But yeah, it's just a dramatization of Casey's death. Yeah. Um. Maureen goes to get popcorn. We get our nice little Pepsi product placement. Gets the jump scare. Phil goes to the bathroom, and we get a Black Christmas reference. Yes, we do. We get the Billy and Mommy reference from the uh, from Black Christmas, mm-hmm. and he gets stabbed in the ear, which we both acknowledge. That, let's note all the things that are wrong with this scene. <laughs> How'd you know his ear was going to be there? Like, how'd you know he was going to put his ear up against it? How'd you know he was going to put it in that exact spot? And what the fuck is your knife made of that it went through a bathroom stall and his skull? Freaking, it's a titanium knife. I solved the, I've solved the mystery. <laughs> there we go. That was insane. Yeah. I was just like, everything is just stupid <laughs> in this in this one kill. This kill, when you don't think about it and you think it's like dumb fun, it's funny. It's cool. Then you're like, okay, so he knew his ear was there. And he had a knife that can go through a bathroom stall that's like, pretty like it, i i i don't know what can go through a bathroom stall plus, easily like plus skull plus skull yeah <laughs> uh but yeah he takes phil's jacket and goes back uh he proceeds to sit beside maureen and fatally stab her which the audience mistakes for a publicity stunt until maureen falls dead i i remember you were like why isn't no one noticing that she's being stabbed? And I was just, <laughs> you're like, have you seen like everyone else running around for the last like 20 minutes? <laughs> to them, this is just normal. Yeah, yeah. And then she dies. And then they're like, oh. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, I guess. <laughs> uh, the news media, including local journalist Debbie Salt, descend on Windsor College where Sydney Prescott studies alongside her best friend, Hallie McDaniel. New, her, um, her new boyfriend, Derek Feldman. Ew, that's such a white man name. Feldman. Oh, God, that's so white. And uh, fellow Woodsboro survivor Randy Meeks and Derek's best friend. I'm just calling him Mickey because his last name is fucking bullshit. Okay. 
we get the really fun caller ID scene. Yes, 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 yes. Which is really funny. Uh, and I think this is also when we get the introduction to freaking the fraternity uh, plot. Yeah, because uh, what year of college do you think they are? I'm guessing freshmen. They have to be freshmen. Right, if they're trying to get into the fraternity at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we get Sydney Prescott in like this fucking amazing ass sports bra oh my and God. like her sleepwear, and she's fucking built. This is the first time we're seeing Sydney, and it's a little too much for me. <laughs> New haircut, great haircut. Is it the best haircut? Do I do I say that now? I don't like her four haircut because she has babangs. Ah, uh, yeah. In four, uh, five. I think it's just normal Nev Campbell hair. Right. Scream? I don't remember her Scream 3 haircut, if I'm being honest. Yeah, okay. I'm going to go with this one. I don't know what it is. That? I think it's the haircut, but I also think it's um, her makeup. I feel like they saw her in the craft, and they were like, we just have to copy her over, her, like her makeup and her styling from the craft. And I'm like, like, yes, thank you very much. Thank you for your service. <laughs> like, even down to like the double earrings they give her. Yeah, well, she's in college. She's grown up. She's... Well, that's true, Edgy. but I like I liked the double earrings they gave her. Oh, I yeah, thought that no, was like for a sure. Cool, I'm, not com- like I'm cool definitely thing. not complaining. And this is the movie where we get the leather jacket trope that Sydney goes on to have for like every movie after this. Yeah, I mean, because she's a badass, and every badass lead female gets a leather jacket. That's very typical. And guess what her leather jacket doesn't do? Squeak? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I will say you hate Randy in this movie. I absolutely detest him. I didn't like him in the first one. I excused it because I was like, okay, he's the, he's the movie geek for this type of movie. It makes absolute sense for this one. That, but also you were like, so who was he friends with to get into this group yeah. <laughs> initially? Yeah. Clearly it was always Sydney because he yeah. always had a thing for Sydney. So it makes sense. Um, but he was just so annoying in this one. I, I don't, I don't know what it was. They really pushed home with his dumb movie impersonations. Yeah. Yeah. Also his soul patch is just Oof. brutal. Yeah. It, <laughs> it's, it, br- <laughs> it's probably, this is probably the first time we used brutal in a non-ironic no, way. It was just, just brutal. It really was brutal. Um, yeah. Can't stand him. And that's pretty much it. I love uh, her best friend, though. I think she's Who was awesome. originally supposed to be the killer. Which is insane. I kind of wish they went with that. Um, but she's too obvious, in a way. Yeah, but it would be really cool. But anyways, uh, she's a really good friend throughout the whole thing. Uh, always there to take care of Sydney. You know, very caring. Blah, blah, blah. Her death is the only one in this movie that's Sydney's fault. Yeah, like straight up, 100%. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I don't, I can't give Sydney like a pass on any of it. Oh, like, no. no, no, no. But we'll get yeah. to that. Um, I hate Derek. <laughs> I hate Derek yeah. so much. They have a lot of famous people in this movie. Um, the guy who plays Derek, um, they have Timothy, what's his face as Mickey, Sydney, yep. obviously. Um, Gail, Gail, Gail Weathers, author of the Woodsboro murders by yeah. Gail Weathers. There's also a... <laughs> <laughs> There's also Jennifer Aniston reference, which is fun later on. Uh, Tori Spelling's in the movie. Tori Spelling. Uh, yeah, it looks like everyone. Oh, uh, Ellen G. Generous' wife. Oh, yeah. Portia is one of the, yeah. the, the um, what do you call them? Fraternity, the fraternity girls. Sisters, as they call and them. And then the her friend, like the, the duo. Yeah. Her friend is the killer in the Urban Legends movie. The one with the curly hair. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but there, yeah, there's famous people in this one. I guess they were like, oh... These new up and coming quote unquote, you know, kids put them in this the sequel. Oh, um, what's his name was in this movie? We're gonna see him again later in this like later in like a few more episodes. Uh the guy who plays Billy Loomis. Yes. Yes. He's uh a Wilson. I think he's one of the Wilsons. Oh, sh- Wilson brothers. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I can't think of his name. He's Owen Wilson's brother. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. The one with the yeah. black hair. Yeah, um, but we will see him again with Kate Beckinsale and Vacancy in a few episodes. Okay. So, so this is the last time we're seeing his face. <laughs> uh, we also get a um, David Schwimmer reference. Yeah, in this movie, it's it's fun. I, I like these little things. 
Oh, yeah. Um, also, I, I guess we forgot. Uh, what's the name from Roseanne <laughs> is in this movie? Oh. Oh. Um, the sister, the sister from Roseanne. The sister. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. The one who's really good at playing crazy. Yes. And who's like obsessed with Gail Weathers, author of the Woodsboro Murders by Gail Weathers. So is she you? No, <laughs> because I wouldn't annoy the shit out of Gail That's Weathers. That's fair. That's fair. I would just be like, Gail Weathers, I love you. That's it. Love you. Love your highlights. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. So what's next besides that? Besides the fraternity crap? Or sorority uh, crap? Two other Woodsboro survivors arrive. A uh, uh, police officer Dewey Riley to offer Sydney protection and report to Gail Weathers to cover the case. Gail unsuccessfully tries to stage a confrontation between Sydney and Cotton. Cotton also is played by... Um, can't think the guy of... who plays Sabretooth. Yeah, I can't think of his name. Um, It'll co- it will come somewhere in this episode. Oh, I, sure. I will get it. Um, who is attempting to gain fame from his exoneration for the uh, murder of Sydney's mother, Maureen Prescott. I don't see his necessity in being in this movie. I feel like they just brought him because he was just part of the plot from the last movie. And I guess as a red herring. Yeah, you know what's great? It's like, man, he's like barely in this movie. And he's the, I, I, I'll spoil it now, he's the first kill in the next movie. Ooh, okay. He's the opening kill. Okay. So, but, um, is it Lieb Schreiber? You got me. You could say any name and I'll agree. <laughs> <laughs> but also, this is the scene where we learn that uh, Sydney Prescott did evolve to backhanding a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> got a mean right hook, I'm telling you. Uh, I love how Gail's like, uh-uh, I, got, I, I know the front punch. <laughs> she didn't get the backhand. She didn't get the memo on that one. Uh, Gail Weathers has an amazing outfit. Yeah. This is the black, like the black dress one. This Ooh, is her black yeah, dress yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, she gets a new cameraman mm-hmm. who was like, do, was like doing the bingo yeah, he won an award for that. It's a big deal. Okay. Yeah. He's probably, he is the viewer, like, placement in this movie. 1,000%. He knows when to get the hell out of there. I like him. <laughs> he was great. I'm happy he lived. I think he was meant to die in the original script. That makes sense. He, maybe Randy and him were supposed to switch spots. Spoiler. That would make sense. Yeah. Also... I'm happy Randy. Oh, no, Randy does come back in the next movie, but he comes back as, like... What? You don't remember he comes back in the next movie? No. He comes back in, like, a VHS recording. Oh, okay, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. And uh, his sister is played by, um, what's her name's best friend from Princess Diaries. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. Oh, also, she comes back in Scream 5, so we're going to see what she looks like now, oh, which fun. I'm really excited about, because I haven't seen her since Princess Diaries. Nice. Oh, sorry. Hostel 2. Oh, is the last time right. I saw her. Right. Um, but we get a bunch of... Also, you hate Dewey in this movie. Uh, let's just... I'll get it out there. I don't like Dewey, period. I think it's Arquette that I have a problem with. See, I think this movie... They evolve Dewey's character to be a little bit more of a dip. Yeah. Um, The next movie... Because you have to remember, the next movie... Um. Gale and Dewey are the main characters. Okay. Because Sydney was doing Party of Five. She only was able to film 20 days. Oh, that makes the sense. The next movie. So that next movie is the one where she's barely in it. That makes sense. So it's the Gale Weathers show. <laughs> Starring Gale um, Weathers. <laughs> all through the Woodsboro Murders by Gale Weathers. But right now we get... Dewey and Gail are not on good terms, mainly because Gail made Dewey look like a moron in her book. Right, and she's like, oh, don't worry about it. It's just a character in a book. And then that's, you know, not true. Not true at all. Uh, also, we get the dynamic between Dewey and Gail that is basically Dewey's the only person that can full-on, like, break Gail Weathers. Yeah, as much as you can with her ice coldness. I mean, even then, I I don't like their interactions. I don't know what it is. I think every single time I feel that she is completely ready to manipulate Dewey. 
um, in a very, very toxic way. And I, I just don't like it. It's uncomfortable. But at the same time, all he does is he says a sentence and he can break down that like weird facade yeah. she'll put up of like coldness. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, <sighs> let's just talk about Cotton real quick. Okay. He was, I feel like, uh, first, f- fun fact, Cotton was supposed to be the killer. One of the two killers. I like this. Wha- he was supposed to kill Gail and supposedly Sydney. Oh. Um, yeah. Uh, Gail was, Gail and Dewey were supposed to die in this wow. movie initially, supposedly. Okay. Which makes sense because how the fuck Dewey lived makes no sense. I agree. It, um, him and uh, Sydney, were, I suppose it was supposed to have like a stab off against each other and just stab each other to death. But, mm, okay. Uh, I think it's because they just they didn't know they were going to get a third movie. Makes sense. I mean, but that just seems like it's a copycat of the end of one. You know what I mean? Yes. I, I, I can understand that. Yeah. But the fact is, he's not the killer. So he feels very misplaced. It seems like they sprinkled him in there at times just to be like, oh, he's a thorn in Sydney's side. Like, he brings up all these bad memories for Sydney. And, you know, she keeps apologizing. He's just not taking it. And you're also, I guess, supposed to think oh, could he be the killer? Could this be revenge? You know? I mean, here's the thing. I think the introduction we have of him, like him being at the, at like the press meeting initially, I think that's a good, a fun thing to bring him in, you know, kind of bring over that from the first movie. Oh, yeah. But when he keeps showing up in weird places, that was where my issue came. Right. The first time, like you said, is really good because we're supposed to be caught off as, as off guard uh, as Sydney was. You know, like it was a huge slap in the face to her. And yeah. no wonder Gail gets a nice big uh, backhand. <laughs> and then we also learn he, Gail told him Sydney knew this was going to happen. Yeah. yeah. This is just supposed and to build on Gail's shittiness factor. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, damn, she really is a crappy person. You know? She is. Um, which I think is the reason why uh, next movie, I think they start to break down her a little bit yeah they, they humanize uh, which makes her. sense yeah but what was interesting is that it seemed like like the, during this press conference uh randy i think randy's like oh look gail weathers is here why blah 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 and then i think someone said something snide and sydney was like oh no she you know she's he, saved us like you know don't oh yeah don't it was uh like that she got calf implants <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and then once gail does that sydney's like oh screw you 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 are a piece of crap yeah okay never mind even though i do like the um when she gets a new cameraman she's like camera on me yeah <laughs> and she's like he would see snapping him as she moves the camera back and forth it's good yeah uh that evening sydney and hallie attend a party at a sorority house which are they, are they at the guys or girls sorority house? They go to the guys one? because we later we go to the girls one because Buffy's there. Oh right, because Buffy's there. Yeah. Um, at a nearby sorority house, Ghostface murders student C.C. Cooper. After the party goers leave, Ghostface enters the house and attacks Sydney. Also, good on Sarah Michelle Geller. Uh, Geller. Geller. Sorry, her last name is one I. It's Geller. Have a hard time, but it's Geller. Yeah. Um. Buffy. And this was a year, like probably at the end of season one, beginning of season two of Buffy. So it's, it's popular. It's getting there. And right up before she's in, um, I, if I am correctly, cause I think 98's, I know what you did last summer. Yeah. So this is a huge, like, I'm going to give her five, five years of her career. Yeah. Cause then she goes, just this. She does. I know what you did last summer. She does Buffy. She does Scooby-Doo. Yep. Which people can shit on Scooby Doo, but Scooby Doo was very popular. Oh, when very I was a popular, kid. yeah, yeah. Um, and every now and again, I do think she does the voice for Daphne still, like oh, every now and that's again. That's nice. But talk about a person who probably should have been the first kill. Absolutely the the production of this scene was really well done. The camera work was very well done. This felt like it should have been the beginning of the movie, like you said. Yeah. 
Um, I don't know if it has to do with her acting, because she obviously is talented. Uh, so maybe she was just bringing it for this. Uh, I mean, for her, like, at, whenever someone brings up Sarah Michelle, uh, Sarah Michelle Geller, they talk about I know what you did last summer. And the usually the thing is, also, this is kind of a bummer because I know what you did last summer was cut and it was going to be right before Scream. Mm -hmm. So this probably, it probably would have been cool to do it. But the argument was always she should have been the final girl in that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is, like, right around that time, which means she was already really good at acting. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Um, it was also a really nice surprise to see her. Uh, I completely forgot she was in this movie, so when I saw her, I was like, oh, my God. Um, but, yeah, this whole this whole sequence of events with her I thought was really, really well done. And also, I guess maybe when they were filming the movie, she wasn't popular yet, so that's why they didn't give her... It's kind of like that, uh, like how Supernatural was in House of Wax. Gotcha. where. He would go on to get really big, but I guess when maybe when they were filming it, he wasn't really big mm. yet. Because I feel like in 97, when this came out, by the time this came out, I feel like she probably would have been more popular than Jada Pickett. I wouldn't know. I, I was never a big Buffy fan, so I'm not entirely sure on like the popularity growth for that show. Um, but it would make sense. <laughs> it was big. Oh, no, <laughs> no. Huge. I know it was enormous. Yeah, yeah no. Um, but she gets, I say probably the second best chase scene in the movie. Mm hmm You, you gotta save the best one for your main, but, um. Yeah, of course. It's also a very scary chase scene. It uh, is. Gail Weathers' this chase scene's really good. Yeah, but again, this one's really well done. Uh, her death looked very painful. Um. It did. And the. The, the phone call was really good. Yes, the phone call was really good. Um, I like the scene where her friend is there. Yeah. And you see Ghostface sneak in behind them. Yeah. It was a good, it was a good, like, um, I think it was Alfred Hitchcock talked about it, the bomb under the table. Mm -hmm. And if you're... Where we know something, but the character doesn't. Exactly. And if you're watching this movie in theaters, which, again, this is a movie to watch in theaters, you know the crowd is going to be like, oh, my God, behind you, type of thing, you know? So it's, yeah. it's fun. It's a good experience. Also, I just want to note that house was fucking ugly. <laughs> yeah, I mean it it's was classic. So ugly. It, it hasn't changed. It, it's just like the one from uh, Black Christmas. You basically could cut and paste them. <laughs> yeah, uh, chasing was good. She gets thrown. Mm -hmm. She gets stabbed in the kidneys and then thrown from the top. Yeah, just yeeted onto the concrete. And also, I like. I think when we were talking about them when we were watching the movie, I brought this up. They kind of gave her the same chase scene as Sydney had in the first movie, except she didn't get like that one moment of opportunity, which uh, Sydney had was where she could lock the door. Right. Right. So eventually she has to get, end up getting caught right. and she gets stabbed, sent through a glass window <laughs> and then thrown. Yeah. Um, and eventually it makes it to the party that like, Oh, the cops are at sorority house name here. Alpha, what was know. it? Omega beta Zeta. I think it was Omega, because they kept saying it with the phone. Sure. I think it was Omega sure. Beta yeah, Zeta. Yeah, let's go with that. Of <laughs> course, <laughs> um, there was two fraternities. There, there was, you know, there was two houses in this movie, yeah. so you would kind of flip them. I th but even though I think the I think the guys once started with Omega, because I'm pretty sure Sydney started with an O when he gave her the necklace later in the movie. But eventually everyone leaves, and... Sydney gets a call. Or the house gets a call. Oh, yeah, the and house gets a call. Sydney's, Sydney's like, hmm, I'm going to answer it. As she would. Sure, let's do that. She answers it. You know, he gets yeah. the hello, Sydney. Gets a. I like this chase scene because it shows how smart she is compared to the other people who were getting chased before. I mean, she's lived through this before. So I'm yeah. glad that she's learned. You know, they could have made her stupid. And I'm so glad they didn't. And, you know, eventually Eric comes in to save her. He chases the killer. The killer kind of, like, he cuts his arm. Yes, yes. And then that's when Dewey shows up. Eric's on the floor. Derek. Derek, Derek. sorry. Derek is on the floor. And we cut to, if I remember correctly, we cut straight to the cops after this. Pretty much. But I did like how tense this scene was. Uh, very ca fast cuts, a lot of going around corners very fast, weaving throughout the house. Um, you know, it, it gets you, it gets you amped up. It does. And 
I like that once the chase scene is over, you see the two kind of sorority girls standing there yeah. being like, what's going on? See, and I like that. And I remember saying this when we were watching it is I kind of wish they were the killers. I would have liked if one of them was the killer. I um, I would like the duo just because they're both creepy. <laughs> 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 they were both very creepy. I will acknowledge that one. Uh, yeah, Ghostface interests Derek, but flees when the police arrive. Later, after realizing that Cece's real name is Casey, Gail theorizes uh, that the new Ghostface target students have um, having the same names as the Woodsboro murder victims, which is a stretch. I liked it, though. I liked it. This goes on to... Because I think in Scream 4... You know, it's that whole thing of Gail's really smart. Just no one really wants to acknowledge that Gail usually is the person that can kind of break break the case in this one. Mm-hmm. In the kills, especially when, it's, you know, I wrote the book on this. Which, Literally. You know, the Woodsboro Murders by Gail Weathers. <laughs> you know. But, I mean, it's smart, but it's, I'm also like, fuck, this is such a stretch. But I liked it. I thought it was really clever. Yeah. It was something I didn't think of. And when she put it on the board, I was like, oh, wow. Oh, huh. That's interesting. Also, I think this is where we get her outfit for the movie. The white the white t shirt. Right. The black pants. Right. You know, basically we're right at the point in the movie where everyone's costume is set in stone for the rest of this movie. Yeah, because I think this all happens next in like a twenty four hour. A few period. hours. Yeah. Yeah. Um uh, Randy theorizes that the killer is likely someone Sydney knows and basing the killings on a movie sequel. Ghostface later kills Randy and Gail's media van. Okay. This is, I think, uh, during this time we get the Baskin Robbins bullshit. Right. Him and Dewey are at Baskin Robbins and they're theorizing. Oh, they're not at Baskin Robbins. They just have Baskin oh, Robbins. Oh, okay. Never mind then. Uh, but they're just theorizing about the motive, um, who it could be, and then Randy goes into his stupid movie knowledge of sequels, yep. horror sequels, and the rules for that. And we get that we get the whole movie thing where we get Toy Spelling as Sydney, yeah. we get um Wilson. The Wilson son uh brother as Billy. We know David Schwimmer is uh Dewey. Mm-hmm. And I forgot who the whole thing is. Randy has is played by a nobody. Yeah. That was like the running joke. And we get the whole thing of more victims, even more bloody and gory, you know, which I will acknowledge. I, at that point I started taking notes on who was getting killed mm-hmm. so I could see if there were more victims. They had more by three. Okay. It looks like, unless I missed a kill from one. Then if not, if not, if that is true, it's more by two. Okay. Um, we then get the cameraman finally reading Gail's book and being like, so... I'm out. <laughs> that guy got chopped. Yeah. <laughs> Why am I here? I like that little bit, though, because he's like, oh, he got gutted. I don't want to get gutted. And then Gail's like, that's not true. His throat was slashed. <laughs> it doesn't matter. He's not in the union anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good little bit. It's a good bit. He, I think he, if he doesn't leave now, he leaves soon after this. Yes. He go gets his donuts while Dewey, Gale, and Randy are talking. He leaves when, after Randy's dead and his van is taken as like a crime. Yes. Yes. Scene. That's when, that's the moment he, he bolts. Dips, dips, yeah. Um. Oh, Wow. Does this happen next? Oh, okay. We skipped the police scene. What police scene? The scene in the police office that I think they bring up F. Doesn't they go? Don't they go to the police office after Randy's died? Randy. Well, okay. Do you want to talk about Randy's death? Uh, sure. The thing is, his death. It's really inconsequential. It is, but it had to happen. It had to be someone close to Sydney to for her to start like kind of freaking yeah. out. Um, but they're at like a tree and a bench. They get a call and they split up. It's Dewey and Gale, and then Randy kind of keeping the killer um, on the line. Mm-hmm. Eventually, he brings up Billy Loomis, right, and like slanders his name and 
right as he's near the production van, it opens up and Ghostface grabs him, pulls him inside. And he gets killed as like a gr- like three guys, but like a loud ass boombox. Yeah, is just it's like oh, very convenient. Walking fast. <laughs> uh, eventually, they can't find Randy, so Gail sees blood dripping from her van. Well, they the see the broken window, van. then they see the yep. blood, and then they open the door, and then Randy's there, all bloody. And then we have the Gail Weathers scream. It was good. She did a good job. It was a good scream. Yeah. And this is when uh, I'm pretty sure. The cameraman's like, I'm out. I'm not doing this. Completely understand. I mean, he passes out. And then afterwards, he's like, yeah, I'm done. They impounded my van. I'm gone. Thanks for nothing. And then he goes into a cab. Oh, yeah. Like, he goes to take a cab. And I noticed this. You didn't. The guy driving the cab had a full-on fucking neck brace. <laughs> That's just strange. <laughs> and it was, like, one of those ones where, like, if you had, like, a broken neck and it was right, just, right. you know, it was, it was big. Um... Dewey and Gail review the tape of Ghostface killing Randy, but the killer attacks them, stabbing Dewey. This is fun because at least I get to break this down now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's this do is it. probably my favorite part of the movie. Okay. They get there, and I guess like most of the doors are locked. Right. So they eventually make it to some random fucking like. It's like a lecture hall. Yeah. It has a VHS player and- in it. Yeah. And they start playing the tapes. To see if they can find Ghostface. Yeah. And I think one of the funnier ones is the when they're at the press conference from earlier in the movie, I like the joke is he did keep the camera on Gail at all times he, because as she walks away with Dewey, the camera's still on Gail. He did his job. <laughs> um, and then he, I, I don't know what causes them to start ha- like start fucking each other. Uh, they have a moment. I don't. Oh, oh, she's like, oh, you're so cute when you're angry. And I'm just like, because they're watching themselves argue. And I'm yeah. just like, Gail, what, what is going on, girl? This is nor the hey, place or time. At least this is realistic sex because she was on top of him. Oh, there is no other option. <laughs> <laughs> Gail is, it, that's, that's Gail. That's, she has no other option. That's what she does. And then right as the like they're making the out on murders, of course. <laughs> Gail Weathers, author of the Winsboro Murders by Gail Weathers. <laughs> while d- she was having sex with Dewey Dipshit. <laughs> um, the other TV, like further in the back, starts playing stuff that was not her videos. This was the killer. Right. They were videotaping. Yeah. And as this is on, uh, Dewey's hand is just full on, just like on Gail Weathers' breast. Yeah. And she's like, get, get, get off. Not the time now. <laughs> And they look up to, like, the projection screen, and Ghostface is just watching them. Yeah, well, because it suddenly is a video of live right now, and then, yeah. Yep. Exactly. Uh, and, okay, here we go. This is probably something that annoys me. Mm-hmm. Ghostface runs. Mm-hmm. Oh, Dewey goes up. No one's there. Somehow, Ghostface is behind Gale. Remember, there's two. Do you think they were both there at that time? Yep. That's my theory. Okay. That's the logic okay. I'm throwing out there just for this to make sense. <laughs> That's what I'm going Wait, with. Wait. No, it can't be. Why? Because Mickey was at the party by now. Mm. Okay. Well. This was happening probably while Mickey was. Oh, my God. We skipped it. What? The Oedipus play. Oh, man. Okay. Well, f- well, let's finish this real quick. Let's finish this, okay. and, and then, then we'll, we'll go back we'll to Oedipus. We'll rewind. Um, but I'm going off of... So I 100% know Billy Loomis's mother was the one who... Well, Mrs. Loomis was the one trying to chase them, because when you hear the ghost face get hit, it's a woman moaning. Gotcha. So okay. she's definitely chasing. And she was the one that attacked. Mm. Uh, we get a Gale Weathers chase scene. And they go, she ends up making it to like a recording studio and they have the soundproof paneling, kind of like this weird maze path. Mm-hmm. And the camera work is so nice oh, because it's gorgeous. you kind of get like, it's on Gale the entire time, but, you're but getting you can pans. see Ghostface kind of. Yeah. 
when, weaving when in you and get out. Gail in frame and she say looks left, you get a pan to looking left to her side, and then we'll see Ghost Face in the back. It, I think they did that at least twice, and I was like, ooh, I love yeah. this. Ooh, it's so nice. And then also, it's a silent room. Yes. So it's just, it's scarier because, you know, with the sound paneling, you're not going to hear when someone's moving. Mm. You know, you're you're hoping you don't get caught. As Alien says, no one can hear you scream. <laughs> um, eventually, she makes it safely into a room. She locks the door, and then Dewey comes in and starts banging on the soundproof uh, to get her attention. Uh, windows. Mm-hmm. Gail, uh, Ghostface, <laughs> Gail face, <laughs> Ghostface attacks, um, attacks him, and he eventually gets a mic. Yeah, to s- that like, her can get to to the other side. Mm-hmm. He yells Gail, and then she starts, like, wailing. Their acting's good here. Oh, yeah. I like it. Gail Weathers saves the Scream series when it's not good. <laughs> Single-handedly. Um, but... And then, ooh, then Dewey's real Ghostface bloody. tries to get her. Dewey's real bloody. How he is alive, I have no he clue. He shouldn't be. But, yeah, goes to get Gail. She locks herself in. Yep. She gets out. She gets... And then we cut... At this point, we cut to um, Sydney leaving. Right. And what was she leaving? Rewind. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, we'll come back to this in a moment. Earlier in the movie, we get Oedipus. I believe it's Oedipus. We're going to go with that. Um, we get the play that she's in. Because, of course. she's a theater major. Of course she's a theater major. Why is she a theater major? Did this make sense to you? I just want to talk about this for a minute. Was there anything no. in one that pointed to her being a theater major in college? Uh, I'm trying to piece together like what was, but I, exactly. I feel like you don't know anything about the characters in one. Right, but I don't it's know. It's kind of like just high schoolers. She didn't seem like the type of person that would be a theater major. I don't know. If anything, an English major. I could see that you one. You know? Either way, she's the star of Oedipus. <laughs> yeah, she's Cassandra. <laughs> and she's in, which, as you can tell, our video is red ghost face. Mm-hmm. This is why. She's in her red dress, and she's doing her monologue. And it's really dramatic. Oh, like, yeah. They were like, we're making this a very dramatic it's, scene. It's college theater. It's going to be this dramatic. I don't, I, okay, sorry. I have not been to, when I was in college, I was not at a college where they had a full-on pulley system to pull a cross up. <laughs> you saw how expensive into the, the air. school looks. True, this was in Pennsylvania. Yeah, so. But they get the whole, like, um, like I think it was, like, Revenge's eyes on her, like, on me. Yeah, like, Destiny, blah, blah, blah. It's supposed to be foreshadowing, and I'm like, mm, I don't like yeah. this. It's It's too on the nose. But then we get probably the best, like one of the scariest scenes for me because it's so jarring. It's so quick cut. It's very PTSD because you don't really know if Ghostface is actually there. Right. The way it's moving around and like darting in and out of the scene makes it feel like they actually were. Um, be- and the lights are strobing right. because it's supposed to be like this giant storm scene is happening. And right. she's running between all these actors and running into them. And every time she runs into one, she sees ghost face. Yeah. So you're like, okay, is he there? Or is she just really paranoid at this point? The editing is definitely key for this scene, for sure. A hundred percent. And also, when you saw how much effects were in this play, you you knew in your mind, you're like, we're coming back here. There's no way you do not come back to this place. Yeah, you're not pouring all of this money into this one scene for a reason. But, and then we get like, you know, they cut the... They cut the practice short. Derek shows up, and then she grows distrustful of Derek at this moment. Right, because she's like, okay, why are you here? You're not supposed to be here because she's just been seeing Ghostface. So she's like, oh, my God, it's my boyfriend again. I'm freaking out. We're done. Yeah. Um, now, back to our scheduled programming. <laughs> the cops take, Ga- uh, take Sydney and Hallie. Right, for protection. For protection. And Derek's like, oh, right. Right before in the movie, right where she goes distrustful of Derek, and Derek's like, and I'm supposed to just accept it? Mm-hmm. Like, 
I don't have a say in this. And you're like, no, dude, you don't have any fucking say yeah, in this. This is definitely, no, you're, no, <laughs> you don't. Also, I just want to let you know, we skipped the Oh, the no, cafeteria no, scene. please don't go back. Don't go back. No. Don't okay, go back. Okay, we're not rewinding. Don't go back. That. I just want to say there was a cafeteria scene where Derek ta- uh, sings on the table to try to be romantic and, like, make Sydney stay with him. And it's a terrible scene. It's very bad. We literally did not watch this scene. I took my earphone. I took my headphones yeah, off. Yeah, he, he he definitely took his headphones off, and then I just suffered by myself. Uh, However, this is where we get second product placement for Pepsi and our Ruffles product placement. Right, and the whole thing scene. is he gives his Omega Beta Zeta letters. whatever letter necklace to her. That's not supposed to happen. Blah blah blah. That's gonna come up right now. Okay, let's yeah. go back. Oh God, thank I. It's not. God damn it. We're not now talking it's in about my it. head. We're not talking about it. Let's go. We're, I don't want to talk here. about it. It's such a shitty scene. We're good. We're here. Um, basically, he gives her a kiss. They drive away, and then he gets, like, quote, unquote, like, kidnapped by his fraternity uh, fraternity or fraternity mates. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, the brothers, because this the is brothers. the consequences that he has to pay for giving his letter necklace thing away, which you're not supposed to do. Yeah. Um, and then you have like the two girls with knives, like the two, uh, oh, the, the, ones fake, from the fake knives. Yeah. The knives, Cause they were, like, they're Whoa! also, him! Yeah. they're also theater majors or at least in the production of this play. Cause they took, because masks they take off. their masks off. Yeah. And I'm like, what? <laughs> um, but yeah, back at campus and he finds Derek in the auditorium tied. Oh, what? Why wow, we're skipping right to there. Oh, no, no, no. There's one other sentence. In the ensuing struggle, goes for, uh, but the killer attacks them staring Dewey. Two officers drive Sydney and Hallie to a local police station, but Ghostface murders them. There we go. Let's talk about this. Okay. Uh, first of all, I did not know they were going to a police station. Me neither. I just thought they were going to, like, Protection. a safe house or something. Yeah. So, some short. Uh, how the fuck does uh, Ghostface get them again? Are they, like, at a red light or something? Yeah, they're at a red light. And uh, Hallie and Sydney are talking and whatever. And then the cops say something like, I think you're safe or whatever, whatever. And Ghostface just comes. And, and I think he stabs the first officer on the first passenger guy. seat. Yeah, he slits his throat. Yeah, yeah. That was pretty gross. Um, and then the second cop gets out, yeah. jumps onto the car, and then he gets like impaled onto a pipe that they run into while they were like... Well, Ghostface got in the car and started driving. Right, 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 right. Um, where did the body of the passenger officer go? I don't remember. I think he throws him out. Okay, okay, that makes sense because they have to climb through, and I was just curious. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, but the- and then we get a scary scene. Yes, but talk about that death for that officer on top of the hood. <sighs> He gets impaled. Ooh, to the head that was by a pipe. yeah, that was good shit right there. And he's there. twitching. Mm-hmm. Good he's like shit. Still twitching when he's it was dead. really, really good. Very well done. And then we get probably a really scary scene. Yes. At least like very tense. It's a very tense scene. Yes. Because, because Ghostface is unconscious. Because yeah. they just got in the car and, accident, right? Yep. And uh Sydney pulls the metal barring with her bare fucking hands. yeah she does she is thinking like how the hell do i get out of here we can't get out of here because it's a cop car we have to climb through the front so here we go also i feel like we maybe skipped the scene but there's a scene earlier in this movie where she has her leather jacket off and it's just like the sleeveless shirt mm-hmm. and she looks fucking jacked oh, in the yeah. sleeveless shirt <laughs> like before i was like you know when she was bending that metal I was like i believe it yeah this is this is totally plausible uh, but she starts to crawl, and she's like, I need to know who he is. Yeah. And when she starts to pull his mask off, her elbow hits the uh, car horn. Let's talk about how well shot this scene was. Um, oh, it's just close-ups to their face. Oh, it's fantastic. It's just, they keep it very close so, to their face. Just to give you a visual if you haven't seen it. So she cr- she crawls through the back of the car through the window, the divider of the police car. And she has to crawl over ghost face towards the left to get out of the driver's side um, of the car. And as she's doing that, we get, we, we pan with her face in extreme close up, and we just see the absolute fear and tenseness in her face. Um, as and then she's going she realizes by. they can't open the door. Right. 
Yeah, they can't. So open the yeah, they have to lower the window and then crawl, crawl out of the window. Through the goddamn window. Um, and then like you said, and then Hallie's like, "I'm not doing this." And she's like, "You <laughs> have like, oh. to." The door is the door yeah. is jammed. You have no choice. So that happens. So eventually, Hallie gets out. They start to run, and Sydney's like, "I'm going back." And I'm like, "Oh, girl, no." I mean, I get it, but no. No. And even then, you should have brought Hallie with you. You shouldn't let her stay behind. Exactly. But she did correctly say, Sydney correctly said, like, once we get to the cops and or call them, he's going to be gone. You know? It's just, yeah. you know, what's going to happen? And she was right. But that decision gets Hallie killed. Yep. He just jumps off uh, from From behind, left. like, the construction. Yeah, and is like, yeah, and, and kills him. <coughs> um, Which was really He sad. sees that, and Sydney runs away back to college. Right. Which they couldn't have been far off college campus if she got back there relatively quickly. I feel like they were literally at the first stoplight and then had the accident. That makes sense. Uh, and Ghostface is like, okay, I'm going to summon her through the power of theater. And he puts like the theater <laughs> music on in the, in the place. And she, make, she makes it to the auditorium. And Derek falls down from when he was like kidnapped before. And, and the fraternity and fraternity people were like... Who do you love? And he's like, Sydney. And they're like, did you say your brothers? And he's like, no, I said Sydney. Yeah, and we're like, <laughs> oh, he's truly the boyfriend that loves Sydney. Yeah, sure, okay. Yeah. And I, <laughs> the best part was we were, we were watching this part. Um, she finds the blue shirt, and you were like, how does she know that's his shirt? To which I would respond, because I don't think he's changed that shirt since this movie began. <laughs> He's the only character I don't think had a costume change. If he did, it it looked way too similar. <laughs> he went from one. He has like five blue shirts in the week. <laughs> yeah, just a variety of different shirts. Just blue, though. Like, we all know those preppy guys that oh, like yeah. all have, they have like one pair of pants. Slacks. Like five different versions yeah, of those and, one pair of pants. They're all khakis. And he's pre-med, so this makes very, you know, a lot of sense for him. Yeah. Also, you brought up, I just want to bring this up real quick. Mm -hmm. You brought up in the movie how every fucking guy in this movie looks awkward as shit and grows up to be cute oh yeah i don't know what happens <laughs> i think either it's the late 90s early 2000s looks on these guys and the styles but once these men age they age very well i just think it's the thing of every guy looks some sort of fugly until they're like mid 30s at least yeah no that makes sense um but she tries to, like, untie Derek. Right. And Ghostface arrives, revealing himself to be Mickey, who we have not seen since the karaoke scene in the cafeteria. Oh, in the that's cafeteria. right, yeah. That is the last moment we saw yeah. him. Um, and he shoots and murders Derek, which is... I'm starting to see that every fucking ending of Scream ends with a gun. Yeah. And we have this moment between Mickey... Uh, Sydney and Derek, and he's like, "Oh, Derek's in on it, you know. How, it's your boyfriend again, Sydney. You can't trust him." And then he's like, and then Derek's like, "Untie me, untie me," and she doesn't because I don't, I don't blame her one bit. I from the trauma she's experienced. I think she tries to. She, she starts to try. She to. does, but then Mickey starts to convince her. Yeah. And she doesn't, and something happens, and he and then shoots he shoots Derek, him. and she's like, "Oh fuck, he really was a victim." Uh, Mickey intends to kill Sydney and allow himself to be arrested so he can blame violence in movies for the murders at his trial. Again, this movie and the series is commenting on not just horror movies, but their effects on pop culture and society as a whole. So though this was really dumb, it made sense to me. Yeah. Um, he introduces Debbie Salt as his accomplice, whom Sydney recognizes as Mrs. Loomis. This has to be one of the funniest scenes because Gail walks out and she's like, it's not me yeah. putting it out there. And then, and then Debbie Salt walks out and in like in Scooby-Doo fashion, Sydney's just like, this is Loomis? <laughs> like, this is the monster literally under the mask? Miss Loomis? Huh. And Gail's like, what? She's like, yeah, I had liposuction. <laughs> yeah. And Sydney it made like a really snide comment. It's like, oh yeah, that's 40 pounds and work. <laughs> and uh i think yeah he shoots she shoots gail yes yes she shoots gail weathers Fall. all through the woodsboro murders by gail weathers <laughs> who falls off stage and it was a great fall by gail weathers all through the woodsboro murders i would expect nothing less from her 
uh, and then she she has her little monologue about like, oh, you killed my little baby boy, right? And like, but I'm like, girl, you left him. Like, again, Sydney says that too. Like, you abandoned him. Like, what the hell? Um, she betrays Mickey and just shoots him. Yeah, she's like, oh yeah, he was just a pawn. We met, or he says it. We met on the internet for you yeah. know like a psycho uh, website, whatever, whatever. And yeah. boom, I don't need him anymore. And then, like, and then, like, Mrs. Zoom is like, did you know there's only, like, 90 active serial killers in the world right now? Or, no, like, how United the fuck States. fuck do you know something that's specific? United, United States, States alone. And I'm like, wow, you know a lot of facts, Ms. Loomis. <laughs> the internet was very useful in 97, <laughs> yeah, supposedly. Right? And uh, Mickey gets shot. Oh, this, he gets shot, and then when he's falling, his gun goes off, and that shoots Gale. Oh, okay. Got you. Yeah. Got you. Um, and Sydney and Mrs. Loomis fight in the most... Th- they do theatrical fighting. <laughs> literally, yeah. <laughs> it's literally theatrical fighting. Um, what happens? The the storm system gets turned on, and Mrs. Loomis is like, oh, no, not the storm. Yeah, it's, like, disorienting. Ah, the noise. Uh, and then um, Sydney gets... The lights start falling because she, like, breaks Sydney it. Sydney literally, the... like, takes the, the metal to make the thunder sound. I'm like, why are we doing this? <laughs> I understand the set was expensive. For theater. But come on. I know you're a theater major, but come on, girl. And then she, like, takes the axe, and she, like, starts dropping the lighting systems, and, the, you know, the like, Mrs. Loomis is like, ah, ah, ah. ah. Um, and then, like, styrofoam blocks fall on Mrs. Loomis, and it's like... <laughs> like, they act like it's an actual rock slide, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> Sure. Oh, no. I was like, oh, no, not those two pounds. She's really committed to this bit. <laughs> <laughs> and then she jumps, and somehow Cindy's like, I did it. <laughs> I killed her with these little, little dinky-ass-looking fucking <laughs> bricks that were, like, powdered with some dust, I guess. <laughs> and Mrs. Zuma's, like, jumps out and, like, grabs her. I'm like, yeah, no shit, she's not dead, yeah, exactly. dude. exactly. Eventually, they fight, and then, you know, Cotton shows back up because, you know, he's in the movie, I guess. He just literally jumps on stage, and I'm like, uh, okay, sure. This man fucking quantum leaps to different parts of the movie. He does. Oh, we forgot to mention he quantum leaps to the scene where Gail's running away after her chase scene, and he's covered in blood, and he's like, oh, I was trying to help Dewey, and you're like, oh, is he the killer? And it's like, eh. So, here's where he appears... Initially, that's his initial appearance uh, where he's like, let's do this interview. Then he quantum leaps to the library where he brings the Diane Sawyer interview right. up. Oh, God. And then he touches Sydney and they and, like such... holds her down oh, in I a way. I hate it. I was so uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, and then he quantum leaps to the uh, classroom studio. where yeah. Dewey gets yeah. attacked. And then he quantum leaps to the fucking theater. Yeah, no, he's literally just written into other scenes. And we're like, oh, right, because we're supposed to think he's the killer. And that's how he quantum leaps. I was like, I don't I don't buy it. Uh, basically, this entire ex- exchange is just, you know, Mrs. Loomis being like, oh, well, let me kill her. She put you in jail for a year. Right, let's get payback. Da, da, da. And then Sydney's like, oh, Cotton, yo, that Diane Sawyer interview? Well... Actually, Cotton goes, so I guess that Diane Sawyer interview is looking really good right now. Right, right. And um, Sydney says, like, I'll do the interview. Yeah, she's like, we got a deal. And he's like, awesome. And then he just shoots Loomis. Just shoots. Yeah. And there's this brief moment where, like, you, like they're both still on the floor. So it looks like maybe both of them got shot. Or, and there's, like, like he it maybe looks missed like there mistake. was blood on Sydney's forehead. And you're like, oh, my God. Yeah. And then she blinks. And we're like, yeah, no, duh. <laughs> um. Then we get the whole, and then we get one less jump scare, mm-hmm. like real jump scare, and it's uh, Gail's hand reaching out through the fog. Oh, right. I forgot. There's fog on the floor. Right, because that was part of Sydney's act, remember? Yep. Um, also, can we just talk about, I just want to talk about this real quick. I guess there's like a gap in the stage between like where the stage is and there's like a secondary gap. Yeah, that's normal. Because Cotton does like a jump. Yeah, no, <laughs> to he get leaps. to the stage. He leaps. Yeah. <laughs> This entire, the entire, like, last 15 minutes of this movie is, it's theater. <laughs> yeah, it's theater one or one guys. Theta. <laughs> <laughs> we have theta, <laughs> and we end this movie in the theta. Uh, sit, uh, Gail climbs out. They both grab a gun. 
Right. And they're like, oh, you know, the, like the, the gimmick from the first movie, Killer always comes back. Mickey jumps up. And he's like, ah. And Gail and Sydney just unleash bullets into this Yeah, man. it's like some freaking action movie at this point. They're like, bam, 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 bam. I'm like, no. No, we're down here. And then you're waiting, like, you're waiting for the Mrs. Loomis jump scare, and Sydney just shoots her in the head. Yeah, Sydney's like, boom, and then it hits her in the forehead, and Sydney's like, yeah, I'm not letting that happen. And she just walks off like a badass. So I have a question. Mm. When she shoots uh, Mrs. Loomis in the head, Mrs. Loomis blinks. I think that's the actor yeah. reacting to the to the to the blood break of the. Okay. Yeah, I. Because I, I was like, was she maybe still alive and she was she waiting? Was. I don't think she was. Okay. Because it looks like she was just shot in the shoulder. Uh, whatever. But I, I to me, she was already dead, and Sydney just double yeah. tap. Which, I, if I remember correctly, you were at this point, you were like. So are we going to discuss how Sydney can just like willingly kill these people? Yeah. In the first movie, she has absolutely no problem, no qualms with killing Billy. In this one, she has absolutely no qualms with shooting Mickey and and Mrs. Loomis. And like there's no emotion. There's no regret on her. I face. think the first movie. I understand her reaction in the first movie because it was a little bit more survival based mm-hmm. in the first movie because like killing Stu was just. Her trying to survive. Mm -hmm. And then killing Billy, I think, was just her wanting the nightmare to be over, in a sense. And also, she had a motive to do it because he killed her mom. Mm -hmm. So there was, like, motive in the first movie. In the second one, there's very little fucking motive for her to be that easy killing. I guess it's just to be like, oh, look at Sydney, she's a badass. But I'm like, this is concerning. (laughs) You know, does she like because I think the next movie, if I remember correctly, the next movie, she goes into hiding. OK, I don't remember. The she spends one. a lot of her movie in the hiding. OK, I don't remember. The Which here's the thing. If I was her, I would do that, too. Absolutely. I would go into hiding. Absolutely. This happens twice on your watch. Yeah, no. Um, when the police arrived, Dewey's was revealed to be alive and Gail climbs into the ambulance with him rather than taking the opportunity to report to the cameras. At this time, the cameraman does show back up finally. Right. And he asks the right questions at this point. He's like, what's it like to be the hero? And Sydney's like, oh, you should go ask Cotton. He's the true hero. Um, at first, he gives her the mic and he's like, okay, you ready? Like, yeah. Ready to start doing this? And then she's like getting ready, like prepping herself. Like only Gail Weathers can. <laughs> And then she sees Dewey coming down yeah. and she's, and she isn't like, she doesn't have that moment where she's like, Oh, which one do I do? Which was like, I feel like if this movie came out today, they would do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was just more of a, okay, I'm coming. Yeah. Like she chooses love and humanity over career and fortune. I think it's more of that thing of, I, I don't think she's like she chose love and humanity. I just think she just she was pretty sure she just saw this guy die like three hours ago. Mm-hmm. You see them alive. You're probably still shocked that person's alive. You're probably gonna want to go with them. Right. Um and you know, he goes and asks Sydney, like, how does it feel to be the hero? And he's like holding the camera and holding the mic. You know, like he's doing like double duty, poor guy. Like you said, she says, like, oh, go talk to Cotton. And uh, that's how this movie. Oh, well, it, it, the movie ends with them going towards Cotton, and then we get the collective soul theme song while she's like walking away from the college, and we get that large drone shot. Right. So Sydney going off uh, to do her own thing, and that's that's pretty much that's pretty much it, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. This movie. So this movie supposedly had really heavy script rewrites because you know, uh, script got leaked. Mm-hmm. You can tell it kind of got rewrites because it gets a little jittery at points. Yeah, there's there's a little bit of uh, erasing you can see happening. However, this is still my favorite, and I think this movie kind of solidifies who these characters will become. Mm. Um, I feel like the first movie, they were kind of proto or like completely disassociated from what they eventually end up being. This is the first movie where I feel like they're in their selective like roles, like according to where they need them to be. But we're going to get to that in the roundup because last week we did everything in one go yeah. and editing it was booty batter butt cheeks. <laughs> so are we ready to get to this movie roundup? Yeah, let's get into the roundup. All right, let's do it. Oh. All right, we've roundup. 
Paige, start us off. Sure. Uh, I like this one. I know this one out of the now five screen movies is maybe the most hated or at least right up there. No, this is the fan favorite. Really? Yeah, this is the... So Scream 2 is the... Scream 1 is the one everyone knows is the best. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, no shit, it's the best. Scream 2 is r- most of the time the fan favorite. Okay. It's the one that most Scream fans like the most. Scream 3 is the hated it's one. It's the trash of the trash, yeah. Uh, Scream 4, it's weird. I think it's with Scream 2 in the sense of a lot of people like it. It's probably the most div- divisive gotcha. one in a way. And then Scream... Uh, Scream 5, from what I've seen, is the second least favorite from people. Okay. Um, Well, for me, this one is, again, we just discussed it. Uh, The first one is definitely my favorite. Uh, The second one is fine. Um, They kind of... It's fun. Yeah. It's fun. Again, all of these movies are fun to me. I don't come out of these movies, specifically this one, having a bad time. And I think that's what you want with this type of movie. Uh, it's a great time. Again, if you're watching it with friends, if you're watching it, if you got to watch it in theaters back in the day, I'm sure this was a blast. Um, I don't like the music at all. Uh, the score and just the soundtrack in general, I did not like. We forgot to talk about that because the entire time we were watching that movie, you kept saying you hated the score. Yeah, I wanted to save it for the roundup. Um, okay. Yeah, it, it was extremely distracting to me in a really bad way. Uh, it sounded extremely cheesy, again, in a distracting way. Um, you know what's funny? Mm-hmm. Is when we were you were like the score, and I was like, okay, A, some of the songs came from back from the first movie. It's more the instrumental of the score. Uh, yes, yeah, some of the songs oh. from the instrumentals well, came back. Whenever doing Ga- uh, Gale and Dewey were talking, they would have the Gale and Dewey yeah. song. But there were other songs when they started to play, and I'm like, wait, this is just Nightmare on Elm Street. These, this is the Nightmare type of instrumentals mm, they use. Makes sense. Which I was like, would Paige like Nightmare on Elm Street then, or is she going to be like, this music sucks? Uh, see, I, I, I don't really remember. Uh, but for this one... Uh, Characters were good. Like you said, they definitely built more on them. I think that's because when you have a sequel, you get the chance to build up on your characters, uh, especially in horror movies. Yeah. Supporting cast was worse, though. Oh, clearly. Yes. Um, Overall, good time. It's a good time. Uh, Do I give a rating now? Right? That's what I do now? Yeah, you can give a rating. Uh, Just that... um, um, Here we go. You rated Texas Chainsaw 9... Scream eight and a half. Okay. That was your final rating. So okay. just so you know where we are in this. This realm. gets a solid five. Okay. I, I can yeah. understand that. It's good. I had a good time, um, but it's not my favorite. For me, it's still my favorite Scream movie. I love this. I, I generally do like this movie. I think it's the one that I have the most fun watching still. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's because I kind of like the college setting is what I've seen. Okay. I like where they're on college. Uh, I love the set. Yeah. I love oh. like where they were. Hands down, it's beautiful. a beautiful set. Um, I This is my favorite Gale Weathers. Mm-hmm. I think that's probably a strong reason why I like this movie is this is my favorite Gale costume. This is my favorite Gale personality because she's in that midpoint between still being like a super bitch but also kind of being compassionate. Right. Um, I This is my favorite Sydney because uh, this, this is, is, I think, where Sydney looks the I best. I was just going to say that. This is the best Sydney look. Um, it probably has some of the coolest kills. Ooh, yeah. I will say, the one thing this movie has over the first movie is it has way more, like, disgusting-looking kills. I mean, like, kind of more. that was part of the, the rules that they stated, yeah. so they did live up to it. They did live up to it, thankfully. Um, I... Basically, I love the first two acts of this movie. I... Where I start to have fault in the movie is the third act. And I have a feeling that it has to do with the rewrites. You yeah. know what I mean? I I totally get that. And also, the fact that this movie was released like a year after yeah. uh, the first one. Yeah. Uh, really, there was no time to get, to like quality check this movie, mm-hmm. in a sense. But with all of that, here's the thing. Right now, I think I gave the, I gave the last scream a nine. Now, even though this is my favorite, I'm not playing that game. Uh, I think this movie is like a seven. Okay, that's a that's I, a good rating yeah. too. 
I think so. Yeah. I think for me, I, I would want to give it an eight, but that fucking cafeteria scene takes it down so far. Com- to, it, it, it drops it by one number. I completely stand by that. Oof, that was really, really bad. That was rough. I don't know if that was improvised. I don't know what the hell any of that was. That should not have been in the movie. I have a feeling it had to do with the rewrites. They're like, crap, we had to take out an entire scene and we have nothing to put in there. Let's do a musical bit. <laughs> we already Let's have theater. Time. Let's put music in there. <laughs> I re- I'm i not a big fan of the side cast mm-hmm. in this movie. Uh, I hate Derek. Oh, yeah. Um, Mickey is in that movie enough to be an afterthought. Mm-hmm. Cotton quantum leaps every fucking where. Uh, Cece should have been part of the friend group. She should have <sighs> just... That would have been so nice. Uh, Hallie, the best of the side characters cameraman was great mm-hmm. it's kind of like it's the characters that get no time that are the good ones in a way and i hate when that happens because hallie was great but hallie has like three scenes i feel like yeah. she has the opening scene she has her death scene and like one scene in between yeah it's it, it is pretty disappointing i will say with this movie if you like the original movie they cared about the ensemble every cast member kind of got their own moment to have a scene to themselves if you weren't one of the three in this movie, you were not given time unless you were right next to one of the three. Because even Randy got no time. Right. I mean, you're probably happy about oh, that. Yeah. But <laughs> oh, for sure. But, you know, this one is still my favorite. I think it's just because it kind of went a little bit more in the comedy than it did, uh, than the first one did. And also, it's late 90s, and I love late 90s <laughs> so fucking much. Uh, but, yeah, um, I do think by the time... I don't think my Scream ratings are going to change this season. Like, my favorites are going to remain my favorites. My least favorites are going to remain my least favorites. My Gale Weathers crush is going to stay a Gale Weathers crush. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, yeah. That's kind of how I feel about that movie. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So, are you ready to discuss our three, our three, the three contenders for the final? Yeah, house? let's let's get into it. All right, let's go. All right, so I'll let you discuss your first contender for a scene we can use. Okay. Uh. Can I pick Cece? <laughs> the only reason why I think that's a little bit tough is because it's so it's throughout the entire house. So yeah, like, that's keep you a little bit more specific. <sighs> Maybe the phone call scenes again, but that kind of echoes the opening scene from Scream One. So maybe movie. not. Um, the only one that could like that I can think of with this movie would be the end with the theater. That's the only. I- the one that really okay. sticks out to me. Um, so I have a few. Thankfully, I have a few that are maybe not as... Uh, that you have not brought up. Okay, good. Um, my first one is Oedipus. <laughs> oh, the first the first part. Okay. The first time. Yeah, I like Yeah, because when we have the lights flashing, everyone's yeah. dancing around you. Uh, every na- And then like one of them ends up being Ghostface yeah, you know. that like, swings at you. That's a good idea. Um, I think that's a good one, especially because... There was a year I was at Halloween Horror Nights, and there was an Edgar Allan Poe house. Oh, cool. And the final room was uh, Mask of the Red Death. Very nice. And it was the best room of the house. Something about the Mask of the Red Death was a really good room. And I feel like that kind of has that type of vibe to it. Cool. Um, another contender I have is the Gale Weathers Silence Room. Ooh, good one. That would be fun. So it's a room with. that is fully silent, that- completely muted. And then I'm envisioning, like, off to the side, maybe Gail is, like, pounding on the window. We can't hear it. She's screaming. And maybe on the other side, Dewey's being stabbed and there's blood everywhere. Yeah. Like, you see them, in a sense. Like, you see them doing their thing. But you're still kind of going through the dead air area. Because I feel like that's a really cool thing. You have a ghost face jump at you. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. I like that. Yeah. Um you know what sucks is we really can't do the car scene because it's like, how the fuck do you move around in a car? 
Yeah, you're right. The only thing I can think of is like we drive past it. It works really good in film. Yeah, not as much I, as, like, not, not as a house, no. I mean, if we're talking about what I would view as a nightmare, going through that movie theater and just being in the <laughs> movie theater from the beginning is scary for me. Yeah, but I think that would be a little boring on a house. Yeah. Um, how would you do the final scene? Because you said the final theater scene. Uh, maybe we go into the theater and... I don't know. Maybe we could sit in the audience. Like, the cart stops and then we get like a performance of some sort. I don't know. I, it, but that's the only thing that sticks. Can we me. be Mrs. Loomis as everything's falling around us? <laughs> I guess we could. <laughs> and then eventually we get like bricked and we're like, I got the final scene. I got it. Okay. It's the scariest scene. It's the cafeteria. <laughs> <laughs> we stop and we have to watch the entire the entire scene two and, and a half minutes in front of us. Yeah, no, that that takes the cake. Oh, you know what would be a good one? You were almost right with Cece, because Cece moves around a lot. That was one issue. What about Sydney's first chase scene in the house? Okay. Okay. And that would lead to, like, that would be the end, and that leads to... So that could be... Or a connector. That could be a connector. You know? Then what else is there? The only thing I can think of is the theater, but mm, theater. I, I mean, we can't use Randy, can we? I don't. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Um. There's. Let me have my deaths. Uh, CC theater one, theater two, which is like we're not going in the bathroom. <laughs> no. Uh, CC. Oh, you know, it would be really funny hmm. if. The first room of the Scream 2 portion is the dramatization of Casey. Oh, yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> and you're going through the house and you see Ghostface, like, on top of you. Yeah, and, like, like on the... oh, I kind of like that. I kind of like that. That would be fun. I think that's us just taking the piss out of what we just went <laughs> through, like, in the other place. But I think it's just, it, it was a, re... here's the thing. It was a really nice set. Yes, it was. Like where they filmed that beautiful house, mm-hmm. but I think that would actually be funny. That I think that would be a good time. All right, we'll put it on the table. All right, all right, that'll be on the table. Okay. So we have, we have what uh, Casey? Well, like, well, yeah, Casey two point yeah two point exactly. Uh, we have Oedipus. We have uh, possibly CC sound room. Sound room. Um, final theater, maybe? Maybe. If we can find something right. to deal with it. I kind of want to cut it and just end with the sound room. I get that. You know what I, I mean? Because if we do the theater um, once, I don't want to do it twice. Yeah, you don't want to You don't want to go back? Yeah. Uh, is there any other, like, big deal? <laughs> the into all three rooms are just where Cotton was <laughs> between Quantum Leaps. <laughs> <laughs> he just, like, appears. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, in this part of the house, you witness Cotton's <laughs> it's like, point oh, of view. Great, cool. And it's just like him touching grass, <laughs> eventually getting to the library, touching some more grass, getting to the lecture hall. Uh, or it's just, you have to spend a day with the freaking chicks from the Oh, the sorority girls? Sorority yeah, no. Uh, yeah. I, that's a nightmare in and of itself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but okay. I think we have some good choices here. Yeah. All right. Very I cool. think those are very serviceable. Yeah, absolutely. All right. It is now time for our closing. Yeah. Ready? Yep. Let's do it. All right. All right, everybody. This is going to do it for Scream 2. But Paige, you, you said you don't remember Scream 3 very well, do you? Not at all. If this, if out of all of them, obviously I haven't seen 5 yet. If out of all of them, this is the one I really, really don't remember. Um, this new movie, this movie, we get The Return of Cotton. Great. But you said he dies. He dies. Uh, Jenna McCarthy's in it. Uh, oh, right. I forgot about that. Um. Gail Weathers' bangs are in this. Those are the feature of this movie. Whenever I think of Scream 3, which is not very often, that's what I envision. They're ugly as sin. Ah, they're so bad. Ugly as sin. Uh, 
Uh, Sydney's dad's back in this movie. That's weird, but okay. Um, Sydney. This is the movie where Sydney's not in it. Like you said, because mm-hmm. of you know reasons. Also, um, this is the movie that had like rewrites on the day they were filming all the time. What? Like this movie was a. You're gonna realize this movie is a mess. But it's also, when they were writing this movie, it was a fucking mess. Okay, so it's just a whole clusterfuck of a situation. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, 100% this, this movie is a clusterfuck. Okay. Um, which is why it's going to be, this will probably be the one that we can go into the most, because it's just stupid. Fantastic. Uh, and also we get a cameo. Oh, uh, Carrie Fisher's in this. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, that makes me very happy. I forgot. Carrie Fisher it makes a brief little cameo. Love it. That. Love it, love it, love it. And uh, Randy comes back for a little bit. <laughs> right, in video form. But whatever. In video form, but still, I think he gets like a full five minute scene. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. But yeah. Uh, again, thanks for joining us. Uh, and please join us for Scream 3. Yep. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.